Hey fam, I am seriously on the lazy day today. I didn't do a daggone thing. Um, that's um, preparing for the Zoom conversation on the 25th. So I hope you guys will attend. I'm going to put the post up. So let me do like I always do and start tagging some friends. I hope everyone had a wonderful day yesterday. As I said, I was blessed to have my daughter come home. She is feeling a whole lot better. She's walking around. She's able to keep down food and all those things. You know, when you get out of the hospital, you can't do. I saw some wonderful father pictures and father posts. You know, I'm, I'm one of those daddy's girls. So I am, you know, I, I love my daddy. Um, but my dad passed away right after I graduated from graduate school. And um, so everyone who has a father um, and your father's living, there is nothing you could have ever gone through in your life, whether he was married to your mother or not. There are no Mary Immaculates and there's no Immaculate Conceptions going on. So unless he was an abuser, you know, you don't know what adult, uh, issues were there are two sides to every story and the problem is that sometimes children only hear the mother's side and after so many years you have asking why you tend to then just believe whatever your mom has told you so um, if you have a father and he is living I suggest you not leave this earth without at least having a conversation and getting to know who your dad is. You may be very surprised that the story that you were told may not be exactly the same. And it's not that your mom was lying, it was, it's how she wanted to remember it. Um, you know, for her personal reasons or no reasons or maybe vindictive, uh, vindictive reasons. One thing for sure is that in my experience, I know that mothers tend to think that they own their children, like possessions. So, uh, and I always say, no, you don't. Especially, I, there's a lot of mothers out there who hate me. Um, because I always gave equal rights to a dad, whether he paid child support or not. And, you know, and because your children are not about money. You can't split them in half. There's no dollars and cents. And like I said, if you were living in the same household, if he was there, you wouldn't be having an issue about how much he paid. You may have an issue, but he still would see his kids every day. So I'm just gonna stop now because I don't even know how many people I've tagged. Um, one of the things I had last night, I don't know if you saw the post that I put up. Um, and I'm gonna put my glasses on because you know I can't see without my glasses. So hello friends, I'm just waiting for people to come on. Who is that I have already? Hi Chaney, oh what's going on cuz? It's so good to see you. I haven't seen Lorraine in a while bro. You need to tell your mom to call me, inbox me or something because you know fam, we gotta, we gotta, we can't be having these long spurts of not seeing one another. I always see your brother well down in, you know, he's doing his thing down in Atlanta. Um, I don't know if you've ever joined my page before, but we kind of talk about world issues and what's going on, Black Lives Matter, Black Women's Lives Matter, Children Matter. Uh, so uh, I'm sure some of my other folk are going to be on here in a minute. And you can get, hey, Cousin India, how you doing, sweetheart? Oh, I loved your picture. Oh, my God, those kids are growing so fast. And you're doing an absolutely wonderful, wonderful job. You and your husband both are doing are absolutely great parents. And I, I love to see that, um, you know, because everybody has such a, this negative thought of what black parents are like, and they don't have a clue. They don't have a clue of what we go through. The issue with racism in America is that it tr it's a trickle down effect. Uh, financially, if you're incapable of taking care of your kids, you know, it kind of uh, nestles itself up into just about everything in your life, where you live, you know, where they go to school, who their friends are. And it's, it's a rippling effect. 
one thing I can say that, and I'm going to give a shout out to my Asbury Park friends who may or may not be on here, but we lived in um, Stephen Manor. Now, Stephen Manor, we was we thought we was hoity-toity because across the street was Boston and Way Village. And Kevin Robinson and Emily used to live on the other side of the street, but we all kind of lived in, you know, no, there were no more than two floors. Um, and everybody played with everybody. You know, I was more of the, the palm boy back then. You know, I was a fighter and the runner, you know. Um, but we we were tr truly friends. You know, I remember when we were younger at eight, nine, we could walk down to the boardwalk. Saturday mornings, we would go and see the Kung Fu movies. Remember y'all, uh, 99 cents down at the, um, at the theater down in Asbury by the beach? We would go down there and see the movies, walking up and down the boardwalk. And, um, you know, anybody know me and my sister? We were the fastest runners in Asbury Park. Because when my daddy said be home at 6 o'clock, he ain't talking about no 5.59. He mean, we in the house about to pull out the dishes. But we, you know, we also got a chance to go back outside. Nisi and Slugger and, um, oh my God, who else? Um, the, the Brochettes, uh... Oh God, don't make me start a name and name because you know I got Lance there, um, Tony Bonds. Uh, gosh, it, it's just it's, it's so it's so many people and my cousin Joyce and them, they live on the other side of Asbury Park. So um, I grew up in Asbury. My sister grew up in in Virginia. And when I think about what's going on right now, I'm kind of amazed. I don't know if you saw my post last night before I went to bed. I didn't want to put up too much information because I didn't see a lot of information that her family put up. And um, sometimes people need to grieve uh, on their own. And um, so basically, it was a, an African sister who's been in this country quite a while since a baby. And uh, she, I've been watching her over the last, uh, probably the last two years and all of, she was in the Me Too movement. She um, was down in Jacksonville, Florida, and uh, I just saw her on TV in one of the uh, marches for George Floyd. And as I was saying last night, she volunteered with a lot of the organizations on different issues dealing with, you know, where we are in this Trump America. And then there, there was a guy that used to work you know, trying to travel up, uh, people in cars back and forth, so everybody would have transportation. And, you know, like some of us, we still do work for white folks. And she she was a um, home care nurse, a home care aide for an elderly woman. And this black man who she knew and trusted, um, they were going to go back out to another rally, but haven't been out in the sun all day. And it's really hot in Florida. Um, she they decided that they would go by his house and freshen up and take a bath and um he decided that he was going to rape her now she's known this man it's not a stranger now this girl has just told her story in the me too movement of being raped and molested by family members for years i mean to the point where she wasn't even living at home you know um so some of the conversations that we have we have to have uh, at home with with ourselves uh, more times than not people that are raped are raped by somebody that they know somebody that they trust because to get your pants off and all this not you know it's not everybody always thinks of that pushing stranger like you know 45 has them thinking that like as if mexicans find that all you white women are beautiful or, or are worthy of raping i'm not quite sure but uh this man he raped her for six days before he killed her um, he didn't give much, you know, fight on his identity. I mean, he, he called and told his mother and his mother then, um, called the authorities. But, um, that had me heavy on my heart yesterday. But I'm going to put that aside. Ciao. So I need y'all to tell me, what do y'all think about these being white people on the internet playing like they black? I'm talking down to... The white girls buying the Fenty, because uh, you know, uh, um, Rihanna has like every shade of, you know, foundation that you can get. So these white girls are going to get their hair braided now, extensions and all, with darker color hair, 
pulling on putting on different found uh, a, a shark look, making themselves look more like spanishy like skinny and but some of them one girl she just had her just put wrap her hair and have her herself a little curly fro there are trolls on the internet pretending to be black now I don't know if you remember, and I forget her name, the woman that she was elected as the president of the NAACP. Um, and I think her family outed her. She was originally from England. And uh, she was married, kids, had been in NAACP over 20 years. And they, they found out that, that she was white and said she had to resign. Personally, I thought that was stupid as hell. And why? The NAACP was started by white people. So, I mean, other than the fact that she lied that she was white, I'm not, um, in her situation, she was, uh, to get to those ranks, uh, it's like everything, you have to be the, 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 the treasurer, the secretary, and you wake your way up to, um, to the presidency. And everybody, as far as the members were concerned at that time, felt that she met all the criteria except that she was white. Now you flip that around, we're doing the same thing. Now, this this woman, she's married to a black man. She had multiracial children. She just happened to be white, playing multiracial. Her issues are different. Now, what they're doing, you know why um, <laughs> 45 didn't get all the people that he thought he was supposed to get in Oklahoma? Well, I'm telling you, these white kids ain't got nothing else to do, but they all went on TikTok and I uh, bought all of these tickets or registered under all of these different names. And so that, that million dollar crowd, million people crowd he thought he was gonna have was like 6,000. So they basically uh, faked him out uh, uh, with regards to the number of people that he's going to have on the, uh, that he's supposed to have yesterday. So he's, he's touting around like a little, little uh, a baby that he is. But, let me get on here because I want you all to see some of these people that I'm talking about that are pretending to be black. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm saying that you need to pay attention to this, because what they're also doing is pretending that they are black and then uh, also somehow, I don't know how many of my friends going to be duped at it, but also pretending that you know, maybe we should look at the both sides and what are the Democrats done for you and blah, 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 blah. So they, yeah, they, they don't have good intentions. Their purpose is to divert you. You have to understand 45 is a desperate man now. He's like a rabid dog. So he is going to do everything that he possibly can to try to win this election. So the, the, the very, very first thing is make sure that everybody is registered the other unhealthy thing he's going to do is what they did uh, down in Oklahoma and what he's about to do in Jacksonville and that's have everybody have to go to the polls if you have a state that you can actually vote by mail vote by mail don't don't volunteer yourself to get coronavirus we have lost a quarter of the electoral individuals already somewhere almost 200,000 people are dead. Now, um, the sad part is that many of them are black. Many of them are Hispanic. Why? Because other than the black uh, pre-existing condition, we have all of the other pre-existing conditions. Uh, I was having a conversation with someone who was asking me about, you know, the black Wall Street down in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And, you know, there are some white people who really it, they were just never taught this in history. The history books, for those of you who are who are educators, the history books have been changed for years. It's just like the Bible. Those of you who believe in King James Version, who's King James? And why does he get a version? Tequasi can have a version. Unless you know Aramaic or you speak um, uh, um, Hebrew um, or Greek, those are the, the original uh, Bible was written in those languages. So King James was English. He he actually hired his seven scribes, Henry Celestine, you know, and Pope John Paul the First. You know, that's a whole, you know, that that's a whole nother story. I ain't trying to get into your your, your religious um, beliefs, but 
you know, don't just sit and watch, you know, some evangelist on television that's telling you to send you your send you their money when they driving big cars and living in mansions and you trying to live uh, pillar to post. That don't make no damn sense, and that's not no word of God. So I'm just telling you that. Um, you know, me, I have my own conversations with God. You guys do you the way you do you. Um, but if you atheist, you crazy too. Because if you think you got up this morning, you told your heart to beat, your brain to work, your mouth, to, your eyes to see, your breath to, to, to release, then uh, George Floyd could have just got up off the ground after he got choked at. So don't think for a minute that there is not a superior being. I, who you call him, what you call, that's up to you. You know, dominations and all that stuff. I choose myself to say I'm a child of God. A denomination does not, uh, I'm not necessarily in need of denomination. That's why I don't, you know, talk about, you know, seeing my father who in heaven. No, I don't, I don't go through all that because I don't know nothing about heaven. Ain't been there. And nobody ain't came down and told me what it's about. So I, I don't, I don't uh, put those kinds of emotions in my head. Um, and nor do I, I do that to other people. Um, but it's just something that black people do. We're always talking about, you know, going to see, going up beyond the... I'm going up beyond, uh, you know, down, yeah, don't do that. Um, but so there's so many different topics that we have to talk about. But I, I just, like I said, I, I, you see, I'm just jumping around. I haven't put on a clothes day. Oh, yeah, y'all see how I'm dressed. I'm in the casual. I got on uh, bohemian pants and I'm just chilling like a villain. All right, so the, the sister that I was telling you about last night that I thought was very important. And happy birthday to my cousin Nina. My cousin Nina and I are the same age. Um, just to just say we're the same age because she's been a Delta for 40 years and I've been an AKA for 40 years. We pledged at the same time. She pledged at uh, University of Indiana and I pledged here. Um, but she's my cousin. Uh, all the rest of our cousins are AKs, but you know what? She chose to be different. Like, I have a lot of male cousins that are Qs, and one decided to be an alpha. Um, no, let me swap that back. They're all alphas, one decided to be a Q. So, um, you know, it's a choice, and sometimes it just depends on what school you are, who your friend base. Uh, I, I am a personification of Elf Get Alpha, so, you know, I know they have the paperback tests and all of that, but let me tell you, I am an AKA, so don't get it twisted. Um, my cousin Vanessa Hubbard, she's an AKA. It's all, also her daughter's an AKA. My sister's an AKA, you know. Um, but I know some beautiful Zetas. Uh, I met some Sigma Gamma Rows at my church. It was the first time I ever met a Sigma Gamma Rose that is an adult. And I'm not, and I'm trying, not trying to be funny. That's the honest truth. I never knew a, a Sigma Gamma Row until I came to college. I mean, I came. Um, Oh, did you see that Lane was in the store the other day and somebody accosted him, the, the guy that, that, was, that killed George Floyd, he was just rolling up through the grocery store. They stopped his happy ass in the grocery store and said, you're not welcome. Like, ah, the man got freedom of speech. You got to go to the grocery store. But he, he minded the damn bowl. He should have went to another town to go to the grocery store. Not when everybody done saw you, you just kill a man on the street. I, I think that may not have been the wisest choice for him to just be up in the grocery store. Um, but you know, as long as a man, you, you keep your, your distance, you can say what you want. You got freedom of speech, just like them ratchet asses that down there imitating the death of George Floyd, they couldn't arrest them because they have freedom of speech, but they surely can take their damn jobs. Okay. So there's another organization online that's going after these, these trolls that are pretending to be black, uh, or that are saying all these racist, uh, comments on the internet, uh, under, uh, pseudonyms. So this organization is basically collecting all of their internet data and sending it to their jobs. Because they doctors, lawyers, and Indian chiefs. They, these are people of power, people in position, people who pretend to be your friend every day. Mm -hmm. They're racist. Uh, because the guy that was, uh, fate was, was pretending like he was killing Floyd George uh, as the uh, motorcade went by, he was a, a, uh, um, a prison guard. Now this thing, if that's what he does, what he does in prison. Now, I know some of you saw the officer in New York yesterday, right after Como did all of that fanfare on Friday to say that strangulation was illegal. He does a, uh, he, he chokes a kid out. Now, I'm going to not be graphic for you. Now, for those of us who, who've taken martial arts or those of us who know how to fight, um, you know, I ain't teaching you how to fight. 
Like, just like I ain't teaching you how to shoot, but I know how to do both. So, anyway, see right here? All you need to do is close this. You only need two fingers. You only need two fingers. You close, close, close. Right here is where your oxygen box, right by your larynx. And see, the closer I close it, the harder it is for me to talk. You can, you don't need a lot, a lot of pressure. So when a person is laying on their stomach, you have to give them a chance to inhale, exhale. But if you close in this, air goes out. It can't go any further than right here. So the countdown of George Floyd's death, Lane was actually almost able to time it. Because if you take jujitsu, you know how long and how much pressure it takes to knock a person out. The person that was, the, the cops were chasing yesterday, they even, I mean, the crowd was saying, he's out. All right, let him go. He's out. You know, so, and that's, so it's a, it's a, it's, it, it, um, they do it because they know there is no repercussions. So if you knew that you were going to work overtime, that you were going to get a bonus, you're going to try to do as much overtime as you can. Um, but if you knew you can get off early and nobody was going to do anything about it, you take off as early as you can. Boy, I am looking foggy as hell. I think it's the foggy outside. Can you see me better this way? I don't know. I'm real crazy right now because I'm looking at myself looking crazy. So anyway, um, I just want you to know that they're not, they're not going to stop. Um, I don't care how I was talking to the head of AT and T. So it's AT and T who's having this, um, this open forum that I'm doing on um, Thursday, and I, I'm going to put it up. And I want you guys to come in and ask questions. And they want to know what can they do. Now these are corporates. Um, you know, my first question that I'm going to ask them is, before we even get started, I want you to ask yourself, how many people of color do you have in, in superior position, not supervisors? The supervisors are, are, like the, are like the overseers. You know, the supervisors are going to, you know, they, they want to be boss, be a black, white. Supervisors are, are about the same. I'm talking CEOs, CFOs, head of your legal department, head of your diversity department. What color are they? Because if everybody on this call is going to be black, I'm going to be pissed off. Because black people, folks, we we having this conversation with each other anyway, so I don't need to know why we need to have the conversation again. But it, it's important that we have the conversation. So what I want some of you to do, if you will, is to give me some questions that I need to ask white folks. Because I'm, I'm sitting here going like, if I need to explain to you all why black lives matter, then this is a moot conversation. Because we're... We're not teaching history that includes um, the fact that just about every military base in this country is named after a Ku Klux Klansman or someone of the Confederate. They, if they had nothing else, they built statutes to, they may not have won the war, but they built more damn statutes than you, than you can think of. Just think, if we built a statue of uh, Adolf Hitler, uh, Mussolini, People will lose their minds. So, and 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 none of that happened here in this country. Um, and, and I'm talking about the Jewish Holocaust, but the, the African Holocaust happened right here in this country. So these are the kind of the, the ridiculous things that I'm going to kind of go through. I don't know if any of you remember this story back in the 50s, this white woman, she told the story because she only had white children in her school. And somehow she felt that these children should learn about racism. And what she did is she divided the children in her class by brown eyes and blue eyes. And so um, she put all the brown eyes on one side and the blue eyes on the other side. And she made up, you know, some scientific story that said the brown eyed children, the blue eyed children were born more intelligent and, and faster um, and stronger. And just by telling her that over a three or four month period, all of the brown eyed children, because she said this was about the blue eyed children, all the brown eyed children started to get in depression. The blue eyed children who were friends with the brown eyed children started treating them differently. And then what she did was, after that, she said, oh gosh, I made a mistake. It's not the intelligence, it's not the, um, the uh, blue eyed children, it's the brown eyed children. And during it, when they told it, when she changed it to the brown eyed children, the brown eyed children to, uh, uh, treated the blue eyed children even worse than what the blue eyed children were, were teaching them. And I thought it was such a, and that was done in the 50s because she had no, there was no interracial uh, kids. 
And I think this was this teacher being, you know, having some foresight that at, at some point these children are going to go to school with black children. And just to show them that no matter whether your eyes are blue or brown, you're the same. So uh, I thought that was very clever on her part. But people that are running around here pretending to be black, I don't know what their objectives are. I don't know what they are, um, what their intentions are. Um, if you biracial, then you get you can pretty much be whatever you want to be. But the thing is, if you're white and you're pretending to be black on any given day, you can just wash the makeup off and go back and be white again. And I mean, who does that serve? I mean, it, it surely doesn't serve us here in, in the African-American community. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little leery about these, uh, these people that are out here pretending to be black. Um, but make sure that when you are going and you're joining or, or following someone, if they don't actually have a picture of themselves, can you guys see me? as heck. I look foggy. I don't know what is going on. I don't even look like I'm. I'm gonna have to walk around because I'm looking real crazy right now. Well, if I don't kill myself first, can you see me, y'all? Cause I'm looking foggy. I'm looking foggy. Foggy. All right. I don't know. I hope you can see me. I can't see myself, so I'm just. I'm assuming y'all can see something. Somebody would say something. I see some heart going up. Who's that telling me that I'm looking, how I'm looking? Oh, she see me? I'm going to walk around the house. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to walk around. Um, they're going to tell me that. <laughs> see, I'm going to come in the house where y'all can see me for sure if I turn on the light. see if these alleged folk where am I here I am so we're gonna see if um, we have these brown-eyed children and these uh, these brown faced children are actually children uh, that are black so when you go onto these sites make sure you don't join a site that does not have a picture because what they're doing uh, for the purposes of 45 is collecting names, emails, um, Twitter accounts, and then they're going to barrage you with a whole lot of Trump shit. And they're pretending that they are black when they're not. So I want you to be mindful of the fact that they are not black and that they are trying to uh, basically uh, get a database to start sending out droves and droves of information to you so that you can stay dysfunctional. And we, we're not having any of that. So um, if this is a, a quick one tonight. I wasn't even gonna come on as you see. I look like, you know that commercial when a guy has on the, on the little raggedy t-shirt he goes out on a date? That's why I'm, I'm all up in my raggedy t-shirt. And I can't see nothing, y'all, because I forgot my glasses outside. So let's have some glasses over there. My baby's home, so I can ask her to do stuff. She can't move. Can you, you find some glasses? I gotta find mom first. <laughs> Y'all yeah, see my chassis chief cat? Yeah, baby. My baby home. That was a hard one, y'all. If you mom or dad. Now, right over here in this box, let me show y'all something. And this is a shame. I don't want you to say nothing. I'm gonna put it outside, mom. I have... Probably somewhere in a hundred pairs of glasses. I can wear a different pair of glasses every day. So, I left my other ones outside. So y'all gonna get black even though I don't have nothing. Oh yeah, I got a little black on. I usually like to wear my glasses to match whatever I'm wearing. So, um, well, I got a little green in this in these earrings. So I'm gonna switch up. Alright, y'all can get some green now. 
Okay. Dream. So what I want to do, so hey, let me see. Chris, Kelly, James Jones, I always know you're going to hey, Shawnee, Glenn, Jerry. Hey, Tanya, I forgot I don't, I sis, don't beat me up because you know we, we ride or die, um, Stephen Manor. Okay, that's my Stephen Manor. Somebody said, hey, Leslie. India said, hey. Cousin India said, hey. She said, hey, India. So um, I need you guys to make sure when I put on the post, because we're having this talk uh, with these folks. Um, all right. So it's going to be on Thursday from 1130 to 1 o'clock. So you need to put WebEx on your phone so that you can join in. Uh, on the email that I'm going to put up, it also, if you just want to be in um, just for the purposes of asking questions, you can do that too. Okay? Uh, what else? So it's going to be me, Reggie Johnson. He's the president of the Edison Metuchen uh, NAACP community activist, Giles Shipp. Uh, he's a professor at Rutgers Law School, but he was previously a head of NOVA, which is a national black law enforcement. So it's called an information session and cafe conversation. I don't know what the hell that means. They try to ju juice up the conversation and they call it something that is some bull crap, but I don't get caught up in all that nonsense. Um, but what I want you guys to do is to go on the Daily Beast and what was else they have it at quite a few places where the it, it's a it's a drill especially on twitter it's a goo gob of them on twitter because you don't see the pictures as, as much you, and you don't go through people's pictures on twitter as much as you do on instagram to figure out those on instagram who are fake but i want you guys to make sure that you do not get caught up in the tomfoolery of these people that are pretending to be black all right I'm going to chill. No, I ain't have a whole lot of interesting stuff to say. I'm just in the love right now with my baby being home. And um just happy. So I took off the last uh, next couple of days. I'm going to prepare for tomorrow. But please inbox me questions that you have. I mean, I'm not quite sure what corporations are going to do. Because they are taking money from Donald Trump for the purposes of their of the big pockets. It's the trickle down effect of the you know the guy who's running around you know plugging up your internet or the person who's in the Verizon or the AT and T store that's helping you pick out your phone. These are not the people who are going to be you know who Donald Trump is doing anything for. He's doing shit for the CEOs and all of the big wigs in the company. So as I said to the other panelists, if I'm going to be on here just to placate. I probably won't be a good person to choose. And they kept saying, no, say cool, we need we need someone who has a strong, you know, continence. I got y'all know all of that. But yeah, but see, when I use that, you use it against me. So I like that's why I'm at a point in my life. I don't give a damn. Y'all can think whatever you want, I'm gonna be what I'm gonna be black all day, every day, twenty-four hours a day. I ain't watering it down and not doing none of that. So, um, I love you guys for continuing to um, to even want to listen to what I have to say. Um, most of you already know what I'm talking about. You know, our history in this country has not, uh, it didn't just start with George Floyd. It didn't just start with Breonna Taylor or Ahmaud Aubrey or, you know, Michael Garner or, you know, uh, remember Miss Eleanor Bumpers back in the day, the five boys in, uh, in Central Park or in the Till or, you know, come on, we can go on and on and on and on. And the one thing I think, I don't know if any of you guys, even though you knew Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, being the first Wall Street got burnt down, this is where, you know, people don't talk about. There was bombs dropped from the sky. During that time, other than airports and military, nobody had planes. So the destruction of Tulsa, Oklahoma was done by the United States government. So let's not get it twisted. It wasn't just Ku Klux Klan. Ku Klux Klan ain't had no planes dropping shit from the sky. Those bombs dropped from the sky um, because it killed every animal. The, 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 the community in Tulsa was, was decimated to nothing. I mean, dirt, just burnt rubble for four New York City blocks. And if you know where the New York City block is, you know what I'm talking about. 
and they specifically ran through and killed every man, maimed every child, um, every boy who could produce, every animal, every cow, every chicken, everything. So we have been in a position of having to start over. You know, uh, no other culture, not even the Mexicans, they come over and, and can get loans before we can. You know, um, yes, we do some ratchet stuff to each other, like this man that killed this, this young black girl, 19 years old, at the prime of her life. And, you know, we have ratchet. And I'm going to speak out against ratchetness among us, whether it be men, women, professionals, football players. Like I heard this, sorry, I don't even know. I don't even watch football. My sister's a big football fan. Is this one big, and all these brothers who watch NFL, you know what I'm talking about. It was a brother on NFL talking about, um, you know, Colin Kaepernick. I don't know how he talking about um, Black Lives Matter. He half white. Well, so what? So was President Obama. Did we have any problem with that? Um, Scotty Pippen. He was raised by white folks. Um, was the crazy one that wore a bone or whatever in his nose from Chicago? He was right from Jersey. He, his, he was raised by white folks. So, I mean, LeBron James. LeBron James was, you know, his mother was around, but he, his, he lives with a, with a white family because his mother was young and she didn't have the ability to take care of himself. So it's not just because you're raised by white people, or, but did they teach you to be black? You know, I was looking, I don't know if you guys saw that, Someone made a big deal. Remember that commercial where you see this little black boy and this little white boy? They haven't seen each other in a long time. And they come running together to hug. 45 got to make something out of that. He's talking about, oh, the, the little white boy ran away when he saw the black boy. Boy, you're so damn ignorant. It, it, that was just, just unnecessarily ignorant. Those little boys embraced for the longest. And, it, and, you know, because of COVID, the parents didn't come. They let the little boys go and hug. But the problem, I, I know I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I didn't know what the parents of the children were. The white boy's parents were, um, was, was a heterosexual white couple. The black boy's parents were two gay men. Now, all of my uh, gay brethren and sisters out there, um, you can get mad at me if you want to. But I have my own convictions. I don't. I don't uh, discriminate against anyone, but um, uh, I don't know how a white, two white men can teach a black boy to be black in America. You can send them to the best schools, you can teach them all the etiquette that you want. I just, you need to get you some black gay male friends then. I don't even give the gay, but you know, if that child is not gay, you need to get some masculine men in this family so they, they, they understand that men don't all you know, talking all it is, you know, I mean, boys need to see men, just like, uh, if you got, the one thing about the lesbians I know, one is the top, one is the bottom, one act like a man, one act one with the women, uh, you know, but look, I've lived in that, in that world, people that I love again, I still have a certain conviction about, you know, children making their choices at the time in their life, uh, of, you know, if they grow up and, you know, believe that they are gay, that's, that's their choice. I don't even know how I got on this subject, but I'm, I'm on it. And I'm going to end on this because I'm probably hurt some people's feelings that I care about. Um, I don't think God makes mistakes, though. If you were born with a vagina, that was what you're supposed to have. If you were born with a penis, that's what you're supposed to have. Now, if your mind tells you that, you know, you are attracted to the, to the same sex, do you, boo? I ain't, you know, I ain't got nothing to do with your bedroom. Um... But when you start chopping off things and adding on things, I had to, I had to pray on that. You know, somebody very, very close to me um, made that decision. Her, her, her daughter made the decision. Her daughter is my daughter's friend. And that's a, you know, it's a heavy decision. It's a very costly, very, very costly decision. Um, I, I, I try to stay off of that because, it, you know, the community, uh, the gay community is a, a very powerful community. And they, they got, they are vengeful just like some white folks sometimes. Um, but that's just my belief. And you don't have to believe what I believe. I mean, just like I don't have to believe the Bible the way you believe the Bible. I don't believe God makes mistakes. You know, 
I do believe that some people were born gay. I started out as a teacher and I saw some boys when they were like in second grade. I'm like, mm, the little boy got a little too much sugar in him. And sure enough, he grew up and, you know, he stayed with that. Yet there was another boy that I grew up with. I said the same thing. He was my, my sister's age. He'd been married for like 30 damn years with four or five kids. So you, you can't judge a book by its cover, cover either. So you don't want to make presumptions about somebody, you know. People don't see me with men. I can't tell you how many people uh, thought I was gay. But, you know, I, I never took it as it is so because I'm like, well, damn, I done had three husbands and I'm gay. Boy, I'm, I'm bad as hell. You know, I got it from all sides. But uh, nah, I, don't, I don't care about what people think. I just think that God, God doesn't make mistakes. So I don't talk about 99 things, haven't I, y'all? So let me see who I'm going to say goodnight to. Cause I'm not going tonight. I'm just, I've been laying down all day, so I'm about to have me a cocktail and lay down. Hi, Celia. Celia, I need you to call me, sis, because I want to see, you know, um, I'm going to work on, work on some of these projects with uh, the Biden campaign and the New York leadership. Um, who else is on here? All, all of the Hubbards, those are my cousins. Those are my first cousins. Those are my, my, uh, my dad. Hey, DeLacy. Uh, you know we're supposed to talk. My, um, I'm, I'm cataloging my Uncle Leonard's um, history, so I may be taking it down to Morgan. I haven't decided. I'm going to be speaking with the uh, people at Morgan and the people at Princeton um, on that behalf. Hey, Nina, happy birthday. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Happy birthday happy birthday happy birthday to you happy birthday cousin nina mwah, mwah, mwah. now me and nina as i told you if she didn't get up before me and nina uh she one month uh ahead of me she pledged Delta, I pledged Alpha Kappa Alpha. We both have been in our sororities 40 years, so you can do the math. Good black don't crack in the coral family. Yes, 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 you know? <laughs> so that sounds to my cousin. I love you. All right, fellas, guys, gals, whoever I didn't get a chance to say hello to. Uh, Amos Crump, I don't know. Oh, hi, Amos. Uh, and who else I don't know? If I don't know you, Join me because I'm going to have something to say every night. I want all of you guys to do me a favor and go and subscribe to my YouTube page. Because what I'm going to start doing is switching everything over to YouTube because some of my uh, videos are too long to put up on Instagram. And um, so we can continue our, our conversation. I'm going to start a podcast. But what I ultimately want to do is um, I'm still uh, running after that uh, uh, legal analyst position on, uh, on CNN or MSNBC starting off. Um, I do a lot of TV One. Um, some of you see me on Fatal Attraction or For Your Man. I'm on that. I do TV One, some of the commentating for some of these um, murders that have been going on if you, if you watch TV One. So grace and peace to everyone. It was great to have a conversation with friends. It's like my, you know, going, going to bed at night and you're my, uh, my therapist that I get to talk things over with. So, deuces. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.